Hello everybody and welcome back to another spoiler review with me, A Border Prince. Just a quick one today, we're covering Redeemer by Guy Haley. Now this was a, advertised as a kind of, um, I think it's GW's attempt to answer the Primaris question of what the fuck's going on. And the wheels are turning slowly, like the imperial bureaucracy that they are. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe this is the first taste of what we're going to get. So it starts off with... Um, <laughs> oh, God. It's gone off. It's gone off. It's gone off. I've got it pulled up here. So it's Astaroth, who is the, um, the sort of executioner of those who have fallen to the Black Rage fully. And... Yeah, his job is to go about. Um, he's he's kind of like psychically connected to all of the warriors of the blood, of the uh, sanguinary bloodline, of Sanguinius's bloodline. And he goes around and uh, he basically dispatches them. Now, that's a problem for the law, really. I've never fully understood this. Why? <laughs> if he goes around doing this, why are they taking them back to Baal? to then sit in the tower and mutate into vampiric monstrosities. You know, um, I never quite understood that. I don't know what the rationale is there, because he's just going around killing them. You know, like, give, giving them mercy. Um, but yeah, this is what's happened here. Now, he's been... Dis he's, we meet him first, and he's in his sarcophagus. Uh, he's obviously placed into stasis between events on his own little custom ship. Uh, and the ship's brilliant. And to be fair, this is probably one of the nicest paragraphs I've ever seen... Uh, Guy Haley, right? Um, I'll read this little s segment here because I think this is a beautiful little paragraph. Uh, it was a fast ship. Quick, his ship, of course, is called the Eminence uh, Sanguinius. It was a fast ship. Quick in the void, but swiftest in the warp. Although it was of low mass, in the realm of the warp, concepts had more importance than physical troops. And the ship was heavy with duty. So singular was its purpose, it cut easily through the conflicting currents of ideas and made the immaterium treacherous. That made the immaterium treacherous. Not even the madness of chaos could deny the weight of Astaroth's work, aided by the importance of his mission and the faith of those aboard. It passed through the worst of storms and made impressive speed whatever etheric tempests curdled the sea of souls. Now, I think that's fucking great. That's one of the beauti most beautiful paragraphs that I've ever seen Guy Haley write. Um, for that alone, it's worth it. So, yeah, uh, he picks up, uh, he hears it like music. Uh, he hears the the sound of these people turning uh, and, you know, succumbing to the Black Rage, the curse of the Blood Angels, and he heads towards them. You know, he directs the ship towards this new set of uh, song, this new song, and that's what he does. Uh, so he goes to a planet where they've been attacked by a Xenos uh, race who are uh, killing them, assaulting them, destroying them. Um, it's taken about a generation for, well, it's taken a generation at least <clears throat> for aid to come. They sent out the messages. They're being attacked by, uh, they, they're kind of like, they seem to be a partially, sorry, I just heard masses of sound outside. I had to just cut this a minute. People are screaming. It's Friday night. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, so he goes to this planet because it's being attacked by a race of uh, Xenos who seem to be partially warp-based. They're able to shift dimensions, it appears. At first I thought they were Hrud, but I don't think they are Hrud. Uh, they're something else. But um, yeah, uh, they're very much... They, they first appeared in people's dreams, and then people started seeing them in their bedrooms and stuff like that. And they're, But they weren't there. And then all of a sudden, they were there. And they started killing everybody. And this planet goes through a war. The people flee into the uh, forests. It's the nice what he's managed to create in terms of the world. It's like um, people used to live in the mountains, but they fled into these these, these dank forests, you know, very uh, like the Bayou uh, in South, in, South uh, in the southern United States and stuff. You know, very much that vibe, but everything's mushrooms and stuff. It's good. It's a nice little vision he's created. So... Uh, the Blood Angels uh, are responsible for this world and they dispatch a squad of four Primaris and led by a normal Astarte sergeant. And it's kind of thrown in that this is... Uh, Astroff just asks, is this... And uh, Astroff didn't appear, I don't think. I can't, I can't remember seeing him in the devastation of Baal. So I don't know what happened there. I mean, unless he did, my memory might be frayed. But... Um, 
yeah, they've dispatched a mixed squad. And that's something we've seen before in some of the uh, the more recent ones covering like Ultramarines and stuff. Um, it's very odd that this isn't a game player mechanic, that they're using this as a... And it makes perfect sense that they would do this, you know. You'd have an experienced Marine of centuries of service leading these new recruits. And they are new recruits. They are new Primaris that have been created brand new since the devastation of Baal from the survivors of the civilian population of Baal um, and turned into new Primaris guys. Now, what happens is the sergeant succumbs to the Black Rage. And we get some interesting uh, discourse between uh, Astaroth and these Primaris guys saying, you know, he just went crazy. Uh, so Astaroth goes off on a quest. He kills some aliens, basically. I mean, to cut a long story short. And he finds him. Now, this guy's gone full Horus Heresy vision. You know, he thinks he's at the Emperor's Palace. Um, he and Astaroth fight side by side. They destroy the alien threat or to the, the traitors, as it appears to this sergeant. And then... Um, yeah, the sergeant turns on Astroff because he thinks he's Horus and he thinks he's Sanguinius. So they have a fight. Uh, Astroff does a nice little sidestep move, brings his axe down and cuts the Marine's legs off. And as he falls down to the ground, he comes up behind him, plants his axe, in, axe into his uh, power pack and, uh, you know, deftly, perfectly. Like he's done this a couple of times before and uh, <laughs> shuts off his power. And then he executes him and gives him, you know, peace, release. He blesses him. Um, and then uh, when they're returning back, uh, they're extracting the gene seed. Uh, they have a discussion with the Primaris. Well, a brief discussion. And fundamentally, I think we'll get straight to it. I've got it pulled up here. Uh, we, oh yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. This is a nice little part as well. Um, when Astros is talking to the... Uh, to the sergeant who's been afflicted. Um, the Black Rage, our father's death, echoing down time. He gave the Space Marine a solemn spare, a stare. Now listen to me. We are Space Marines. We do not pray. We hold no person to be a god and all gods to be monsters. We give praise to no one but mortal heroes and we thank the Emperor as a man and not a divine being. But we will pray now, you and I, for peace in death. And I think that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I think it shows the sort of the continuation of uh, these Space Marine chapters as um, embodiments. I mean, many of them have turned into superstitious belief of like, you know, they've turned the back on sort of the, the fundamentals of the Imperial truth and all that. But the the first founding legions, the, all the chapters descending from them still have that, you know, the Ultramarines do as well. Um, they pray, but it's not, it is religion, but it's not religion, you know? Um, and I like what Guy Haley's doing here. He's He and um, Chris Wright are, are probably the ones who are dealing with this, the the sort of atheist, uh, secular, imperial faith as it's continued, more or less, amongst the Space Marines uh, from the f first founding all the way to the current era. And now Gilliman's returned and Gilliman is starting to... to he's, the things he's seen with the avatars of the Emperor... Celestine and stuff. Um, it's good. It's good. And I like, I think it shows where Guy Haley's going with things. And I think it's a good precursor for the future. But we get to the uh, moment here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Hi, Chaplain. May I pr have permission to ask your guidance? One of the Primaris asks. You may. Will this happen to us? Talking about the sergeants. Um, Astroff answered thoughtfully, Your creator, Belisarius Call, has many qualities, but he is a braggart and wears hubris like a gown. It is impossible to eliminate Sanguinius' suffering from our souls. But it may be that you are immune from its effects. Then if we, then if we shall never see what the angel saw, can we truly call ourselves blood angels? Asked the Primaris. You are Primaris Marines. But you are blood angels first. The blood of Sanguinius flows in your veins as it does in mine. You may never suffer the way that Erasmus did, that's the sergeant, uh, but rest assured you are my brothers, said Astroff. Uh, he made sure to... <laughs> so then this is this is the one. This is where Guy Haley's been a fucking tease. But I don't, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, he made sure to meet the eyes of each of them. And as he did, he heard a few distant notes of pain, a foretaste, perhaps, of what might come to pass. That's it. That's what we get. It goes on a little bit. Um, I like what Guy Haley's done here, but again, I think this points to the, threat, the problem that they have in terms of the law. 
Uh, they've thrown this out as a little bit of a taster. But uh, it's it's not really telling us anything. <laughs> it kind of is, but not really. Um, and if I was Astroff, I'd be worried because he's going to be out of a job soon. What's he going to do with his time? You know, his entire existence devoted to this. Eventually, all the normal space marines will die out. And you'll just have uh, the Mary Sue Sue uh, Primaris Marines who are immune to everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah we'll see we'll see um, I think we need a Belisarius Cool novel and we need to know what's going on there and they must have some idea of what to do but I think that's the only way we're going to get this uh, it's going to have to be like a showdown we're going to have to learn more about, oh, there needs to be so much work done in terms of making the law make sense and Guy Haley Chris Wright um, who's the other one shit I forgot sorry I've forgotten your name <laughs> They're doing great work, and I I hope they're given the opportunity to expand, and I hope they're given the opportunity to to make it right. You know, I mean, this, it'd be such a shame if the GW universe sort of collapsed in on itself because of stupid choices like this and other potential stupid choices that may be down the pipeline. You know, just let me have my super soldier warrior monks who are in brotherhoods slaying the enemy with righteous fury. Just just let me keep it, you know? And let them all have their individual little, their individual little tra traits that make them unique. You know, that give their, me they give their lives purpose. They give their suffering reason. Because um, if you're going to replace all the old Space Marines with these new guys, it kind of cheapens the whole thing. But I think, you know, they, these guys obviously know that. It's just what they're allowed to do. So please, whoever's in charge of that, do the right thing. Don't ruin this. What are you doing? There's no need to. It could be glorious. The whole thing could have been amazing at this point. But, um, you know, the work they've done is great. But anyway, that's what we get here in this. It's billed as a sort of... They build it as like, oh, there's revelations in this. There's not really. I mean, it's a nice little quick tale. Uh, it's nice to see Astroff. He had one of the best character. He had one of the best models ever. Now, the newer version that came out where he's holding his axe like this, I don't like that, but there was an original version, I'm pretty sure, where he had his axe like this, and he had the most glorious armour, because he wears armour that's like all veiny. And so someone who asked in the um, in the comments section before, uh, yeah, he's, his wings are black. He's, you know, he's hardcore angel of death. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's good to see that the Blood Angels are still up and fighting. They obviously have some territory that they're still controlling, so that's another little taster. Um, but until we get a book, uh, another book with Dante in it, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on with Baal. We don't know what's going on the other side. But something is clearly going on. They are still functioning. And it is after the devastation of Baal at some point. Um, so, what, like a decade this is set like a decade after the devastation of Baal, at most, because they've just got these new guys who survived the battle of Baal, um, the devastation of Baal, and have now been turned into space marines, uh, primary space marines. So, and of course, like it takes about that long for blood angels to get made in their sarcophaguses. Whether the primaries go through the same process, I don't know. Um, this is all stuff that needs to be covered, and this is why the primaries thing is uh, is a bit shit because it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.